Milo Ventimiglia saved my life. He is a true hero, and I couldn't love the guy more. I have your eyes on the sky and the bringer of doom. Subtle. I got movement. We got a situation. RPG's 12 o'clock. Incoming! Weapons away. Well, congratulations on the film. Man, it is intense, this film. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great way to first describe the movie. It is very intense. A bit of a roller coaster ride. Yes, it reminded me of Behind the Enemy Lines, but in the modern technology, drones. I mean, it was just awesome. Drone, Guys are gonna, like, gonna like this stuff. Russell Crowe, shirtless Hemsworths, <laughs> Milo Ventimiglia just chiseled and shooting people. Um, it was a lot of fun to film, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited by this one. Yeah, it was really cool um, to see how the technology um, is used here because you see it on the ground with boots on the ground and also the drone pilot, which played by Russell, Russell Crowe. Um, so it's kind of awesome to see that, that dichotomy because it's stressed on both <laughs> sides, right? It's like the people watching it, their life, your life is in their hands. Yeah, it's it's there's a great moment and in, in the in the movie between my uh, my character Bishop and Liam Hensworth's character Kinney, where Kinney kind of has this almost like a, a belief that he's better than the boots on the ground, that the special forces that are on the ground, because he calls us barbarians because we we we're into this face to face combat and we actually you know look into people's eyes when we when we when we shoot them and kill them and things like that, whereas he's you know he calls in the drones and. He pushes a button so he doesn't get to see the devastation that he causes, which is where Bishop calls him out on, on it. You know, no, there's no winners in war. And that's basically, you know, Kinney's first mission out in the field. And so he gets to see it firsthand where Bishop says, you know, it just takes one bad day to change your whole perspective. And unfortunately for, for Kinney, that day is today. Yeah. And uh, it's a nice setup because in the beginning, Liam, Liam Hemsworth's character is like a newbie. He's a drone pilot. He's not used to being on the ground. So they're like, oh, he's going to be first. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the red shirt from Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to go. He doesn't even know how to hold his gun properly. He's going to be first. And then you're like, oh, surprise. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, like to call, I like to say Land of Bad is it's, it's a love story, you know, between Bishop and Kinney. You know, they, they start button heads at the beginning. Um, but it really does come from a place of, of love and, and worry. You know, um, Kinney's joining this this elite special forces team being dropped into the Philippines between myself, Luke Hemsworth and Milo Ventimiglia. We're a tight knit group where the slightest hesitation and someone dies, yeah. you know. And so Bishop's constantly prodding and poking at Kinney um, because he wants to make sure he's ready. You know, if this is his first time in the field, he can't hesitate. He can't think twice. He can't, you know, get scared because... He might die and, 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 and they might die. It, it causes people, you know, to, to lose their lives. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really a coming of age story for, for Liam Hensworth's character to kind of grow up very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel that, you know, they, they grow. It's, it's guy meets guy. Guy hates guy. Guy falls in love with guy. Guy loses guy. Guy gets guy. It's a true love story between me and Liam Hensworth, you know, off camera and on camera. He's a beautiful man. And, and then you have this beautiful warmth and, and heart surprisingly coming from Russell Crowe's character where, you know, he kind of leaves you laughing. He's, he's so much fun in, in, in this movie. Yeah. I was thinking kind of like a grandpa Russell Crowe. <laughs> you said that, not me. I will oh, no. never say he, he will always be a gladiator and be able to kick my butt. So I'll have nothing but respect for that wonderful gentleman. No, because it's a different role for him. He's kind of the caretaker. He's like your guy's caretaker. He's, he like, is. he's looking reminds, out for you. He's looking out for you. It reminds me of the humor in, um, do you remember Nice Guys, the movie with Ryan yes, Gosling? I love that movie. Yeah. It's that kind of kind of like dark humor that he brings. Because yeah. this is such an intense film. It really is a roller coaster thriller that just doesn't stop. It was, it was a really tough shoot for us, you know. It was hot as hell. It, it was crazy warm. We're carrying all that gear, the weapons. You know, my mm -hmm. sniper rifle is 50 to 100 pounds. I've got my, my assault rifle, my side weapon, my bulletproof vest. And you're running up and down the mountain. So the crew are running up and down the mountain. Even just to set up to take all the equipment up the mountain is, is pretty tough for them. So, you know, I think it was a well-deserved break for our crew to, to, mm -hmm. to, to re return to the studio and just kind of be 
in the house for the last couple of weeks. And what was it like working with Liam? You're in this backyard, essentially, in Queensland. Basically, um, the, the royal family of Australia. You know, I, I, <laughs> I met the king. You know, we have King Russell Crowe. We have the two princes, uh, Liam and Luke Hemsworth. Um, I absolutely love them. Yeah, those Hemsworth brothers are trouble. You see it on the social media. They're like, oh, man, they're so much fun. They're just too it's, much. It is. <laughs> like, it's almost like we like they just didn't, they just haven't grown up. That Like, even Chris as well, he's the same. Like, we're, we're all just kind of big kids running around just enjoying life. And, and yeah. you know, it's, it's an example of how life should be. That's what yeah. I say. Be a Hemsworth. <laughs> um, and Milo is also great. I don't think we've ever seen him in this uh, physical type of role. And he's buff. You guys, did you guys go to buff school? Army um, on, uh, Delta Force I, I, I always feel good about myself. I, I go to the gym, you know, five, six times a, a week to stay fit and healthy. Just in general, you know, as an mm -hmm. actor, you, you pay for the prep, not the acting. The acting's for free, right. you know, right. so you're always trying to stay in shape. And with the quick turnaround in this movie, I got the script Friday night, met the director, uh, uh, William Eubank, on a Saturday, and I was in Australia on Monday. So I didn't have time oh. to train and get in shape for this. I was luckily already kind of almost there. Yeah. Um, but with Milo, I mean, the guy is incredible. He is so cool. He's he's the most meticulous and prepared actor you'll ever meet. He was, he's Papa Bear in the movie. He plays Sugar, the team leader. Mm -hmm. And in the cast, he was the Papa Bear. Me and Luke are the, the troublesome middle child kids who were just messing around. And then Liam's the focus, you know, baby of the bunch. Who's you know he had he was working on his lines and he had loads of numbers to call out at the Chatech. Um, but there was a moment when Milo literally saved my life. I was chatting in between takes to the director, producer, and um, people are always messing with your pack, your gear. The props department were kind of, Grant was there and he was, he was messing with my back or something, doing something. What I didn't know is a white tip spider, a poisonous spider had been crawling up my backpack and he's trying to shoo it away. Milo comes up behind me and goes, smack, <laughs> hits me in the back. I'm like, look, I look back because Milo's always fixing my gear because I'm, I'm literally the middle child. I'm, I'm messing around. Things are falling off me. And he's like, bro, take this here, put this here. So I'm used to Milo back there doing stuff. He comes in front of me with a knife and a dead spider on the end of his knife. It is a white tip spider that if he bites you, will give you a flesh eating disease. And at worst case scenario, it could kill. Milo Ventimiglia saved my life. He is a true hero. And I couldn't love the guy more. Yay, me and Milo. Come to, He's come the to best. The He's the best. <laughs> I know Australia is known for their ugly, big ass spiders. Everything wants Ugh. to kill you. Like, like Luke would just send me videos from his backyard. Like on our, on our weekends off, like he'd he'd go home sometimes because he was you know it was only a few hours drive home. So sometimes he'd sneak home and see the kids. But he'd send me videos of like pythons in his back garden eating bats, and I'm like, bro, mm. don't send me this. You know, Milo's out <laughs> surfing in the ocean, and I'm like. There's great, great whites there, bro. What are you thinking? They got scorpions, snakes, spiders. Like even, even the kangaroos look terrifying. Like they me wanna, and Milo, fight you. Day, we drove back and we, we stopped uh, on, the, on the way back because we saw some kangaroos. They're like deers on steroids that can stand on their back legs. They like look at you and, and for no reason at all, they run on their back legs, they jump. So I, I understand why they've got big back legs, but why do they have biceps and chests? <laughs> Like, why do they look like they're constantly in the gym? There's no need for their chest and their arms to be so jacked. And they just yeah. want to knock you out. They're terrifying. They're scary. They yeah, I've, seen cute. The, I've seen those videos where they take on, they're, they're, oh, they're like boxing I, somebody. I would never take on any of the wildlife in Australia. You know? but, but it was a beautiful country. It, it's, it's incredible. I love my time there. I mean, Sounds like a lovely place to visit. Just uh, ignore the, uh, the animal life. <laughs> ignore the terrifying animals. The people are lovely. <laughs> um so when i ask about the facts you said you were actually carrying like real guns not just prop guns they're like actual yeah. guns Re real real guns yeah wow uh, it, looked, it looked really authentic and then there's some cool stuff uh, like the late i don't know i want to call, call them lasers like when the shots are going by you guys those are really really cool uh what were you guys you know when you were shooting your guns were they you know what were you shooting like blanks we, we, we were shooting blanks, yeah. What Basically, we had, um, before we started on, on set, we, we had some training with some Australian Special Forces under the, the guidance of Paul Kale, who was um, a retired uh, vet. And he basically kind of took the actors all, all aside and, and trained us how to hold a gun, how to move, how to crouch, how to, how to fall, how to roll, literally even how to speak, you know, and, and mannerisms um, to kind of get us into that, that frame of mind. And 
you know, once you've been drilled by professionals like that and you kind of have that trust on set with the assistant directors kind of showing you empty magazines, showing you empty guns, empty barrels and empty chambers, once you've got that trust and, 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 and safety kind of out the way, you've even got people clearing where we are for, for snakes, scorpions, spiders. Um, then you can just focus on the acting, you know, and it, it's mm -hmm. so important that before every take, after every take, you, you're never allowed to hand your gun off to anyone except our experienced, um, our team, the, 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 the weapons team. Um, you couldn't just put the gun down. You couldn't hand it to anyone. They weren't allowed to touch it. Anytime you're given a gun, every single time, even if it was three seconds ago and you could see the gun, they will go through the, here's the empty chamber, here's the empty magazine, just for, for ultimate safety. So um, it really was cool kind of running around in all that equipment, but still feeling safe. It's just a glimpse of what, you know, troops around the world kind of go through. I, I, right. I was there for eight weeks in, in the sweltering sun of Australia, running up and down mountains of, of, of Australia and, and rock faces. And I was exhausted. I had all this extra weight on me. I had my assault rifle, my side weapon. And then my, my Bishop character carries a, a sniper rifle as well, which is like an extra 50, 100. It's, it's like a, the weight of a small human. It's ridiculous. So I just realized very quickly, I don't want any of that. I've got nothing but respect for our troops because they do that day in, day out, but with real sacrifices, with real threats, you know, and, and, it's as as a forces kid, you know. It's it's. I've got nothing but admiration for for those people who risk their lives and and those who aren't even in the warfare. You know, those who are, are, you know are still safe, but they're still kind of a well oiled machine. You know, everyone counts. Everyone's pointing towards the same direction, and that's you know hopefully peace on earth. You know, that's what we're after. But um, just seeing a glimpse of the world that they go through and the stories that we got from our special forces teams was terrifying. But it all helped with the prep for your character because you were able to see kind of that backstory and, and create that backstory for your character, which helps, you know, you know, as an actor, put something authentic on screen.